welcome to the NepoSmart Android app tutorial. In this video, I'll first show you how to connect a NepoSmart camera to the NepoSmart app. We will then explore the interface when viewing the camera's video and I'll explain what each icon does. Next, we will go through all the device settings and discuss the numerous features like setting up email notifications, SD card recording, Dropbox sync, etc. And finally, we will briefly discuss the icons on the bottom of the main screen, where you can view your video on the SD card and have quick access to the controller. This will all make sense later, so let's get started. So first things first, let's download the Nepo Smart app from the Play Store and open it. This is the main menu where you can see all your Nepo Smart devices. Since we haven't connected any yet, let's add ours by tapping Add Device. Here we're choosing the device that we're adding to the app. The device I'm adding is the indoor 1080p, so I'm going to tap on that camera. These videos are going to play, showing you how to connect the NepoSmart camera to your Wi-Fi. But I'll demonstrate what these videos are doing, so you can skip through them by pressing Next, and then Next again, until you reach this page. This is the page will actually add the camera to your Wi-Fi network. It's important to note that this technique only works with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi bands. You can always go back and try a different method, for which the app also provides step-by-step -step instructions. I won't cover those methods in this video, but you can always consult the user manual for more details. So once you reach this page, we're going to go and set up our camera. So here I've already screwed in the Wi-Fi antenna and I'm just powering up the NepoSmart camera. Now the camera will begin to initialize. Once you see the camera stop panning and tilting, and the LEDs start pulsating, then we're ready to begin. Now this is important to note. From here, when the LEDs start blinking, you have about 5 minutes to join the camera to your network. If you see only this red LED flashing, then the time is up and you'll have to restart the process by unplugging and replugging your camera. Just keep that in mind and let's head back to the app. So on this page, we're going to enter the Wi-Fi password to our network. Once you've done that, bring your phone close to the camera and press start. The phone will emit a high-pitched sound that the camera can detect. All we have to do right now is wait. Eventually, we'll see the blue light flash rapidly, which is then followed by two beeps which sound like this. A dialog box will appear asking you if you saw the flashes and the two beeps. If you did, then click yes and we can move on. If not, you can try and restart the process, or try a different method. Now, once you tap yes, you'll be brought to this page. All that's left is to add the NepoSmart camera into your app. And we're going to choose Camera Search. The app will search for all NepoSmart devices connected to our Wi-Fi. And that's ours right there. Let's tap on it. Every new first-time camera is pre-filled with a default username and password. We don't have to do anything on this screen for now, so tap Next. So now the app's going to add the camera. A dialog box will appear telling you to change the default username and password. We will tap Exit for now, but we'll definitely change the default later. You can now view the video of the added camera, so let's tap on it. And there we go, that's live video directly from the camera. Now in this part of the video, we're going to explore what all the icons do. The bottom left icon is the speaker. When you tap on it, you can hear what the camera hears. Tap it again to deactivate it. The icon to the right is the microphone. So when you press it, you'll be able to speak through the phone to the camera's microphone. Just tap and hold the microphone button until it's blue as shown, and then you can speak through it. To deactivate it, let go and tap on the microphone icon. The next icon controls the video settings. It brings up this menu. The top left icon controls the brightness which you can adjust using this slider. The next icon controls the contrast. The next two icons are Enable Night Mode and Disable Night Mode, which control whether or not Night Mode is enabled automatically or not. The last two flip the video feed horizontally and vertically. This is useful if you're mounting your camera upside down. The next icon, when pressed, automatically pans the camera, sweeping all the way from one side to the other. To stop the panning, tap on the icon again. 
Similarly, the next icon tilts the camera up and down. And finally, the bottom right icon allows you to set positions to which the camera can pan and tilt. To do this, tap on the icon, and then set, and then the number 1. We can then swipe the camera to a different position. Once we reach a position that we want, then we can tap on the icon again, tap set, and the number 2. Now here's the cool part. Tap on the icon again, tap go, and then the number 1. The camera will now automatically go from position 2 to position 1. Now let's move on to the icons at the top. The top left icon is the controller, which can be used to control garage doors, gates, trigger a siren, and open Nepo Smart door locks, depending on what is connected to the camera. The icon next to that controls the resolution of the video, whether it's low, medium, or high definition. We'll just keep it on medium for now. The next icon allows you to take a snapshot of the video feed. So whenever you tap the icon, it'll take a screenshot which saves into your phone's camera roll. Similarly, when you tap on the next icon, it will record a video which will then also save into your camera roll. And to stop recording, tap on the icon again. Now that does it for all the icons here, so we're going to tap on the X and return back to the main screen. Now we're going to go into the device settings. To change the setting of this particular camera, let's press the gear button. I'm going to go through this list starting from the top. You can change the camera name by clicking on edit. And you can change the camera name to any name you see fit. For the next field, if someone else with access to your camera changes the username and password, you will no longer be able to connect to the camera. To fix this, you can tap on switch and update the new username and password to regain access. Next, within Wi-Fi network, you can change the network the camera is connected to. Since we're already connected to a Wi-Fi network, we'll skip this. We'll move on to user settings, which is extremely important. So I'm going to tap on it. Every camera has an administrator username and password to view its live video and change its settings. Here, we highly recommend you to change the username and password from the default. So we're going to click on the gear button, bringing us to this edit user page. Then we're going to change the username and password to something else. Make sure to remember this password and hit save user. Now the username and password have been updated. So let's go back to the device settings. Notice that we're not logged in as admin anymore, but to what we changed, which is your new camera administrator username. Now let's get back to the user settings. On top of the administrator username and password, there's also a controller username and password, which is like another layer of security added to the system. If a different user doesn't have access to this controller username and password, they can't open the garage door, activate sirens, or open NepoSmart door locks. It's like another level of clearance to make sure you're secure. And finally, if you give only visitor access to someone, they can view the live video, but that's it. They cannot change any settings or access any of the icons. Now let's go back and go to email configuration. So in email configuration, you can set the system to send you an email whenever you receive a notification, like when a door is opened or a perimeter is breached. First, enter a valid email and password, which will act as the sender email. If you're using an email different from Gmail, then tap on the triangle here and choose your email from the drop-down list. Once you've chosen your email, then we can move on and scroll down to the recipient line. This is where you can enter a valid account to receive the notifications. So I'll enter the same email that I used as a sender to also receive emails as well. And if you want, you could also enter a phone number with an email to text address. The address will depend on what your carrier network is. Once you finish, tap on apply and test. If successful, these accounts will receive an email. Once this dialog box appears, just click OK. Next, the controller slash sensor allows you to control any additional accessories you've added with NepoSmart. Let me show you. So I'm going to tap on controller slash sensor. By default, all the controllers are turned off. Now let's say that you've connected your garage opener to the camera. So let's start configuring it. I'll first tap on door sensor. 
Then I'll tap on garage slash gate control. If you've got a perimeter beam, then you would instead tap on the perimeter beam to configure it and so on and so forth. Now we're going to tap next. Here's where you can edit the specific settings of the controller. First, you'll want to tap on enable detection. So now when the door opens, it'll detect it. And when the door closes, it'll detect that as well. Now for the next option, you can preset a position for the camera to move whenever a detection occurs, which in this case is when the door opens or closes. Here we see that we can choose one of eight positions for the camera to move to. And if you remember, you can set a position with the bottom right icon when you're viewing its video. Here's a quick reminder. The bottom right icon allows you to set positions to which the camera can pan and tilt. To do this, tap on the icon and then set and then the number one. As you've seen, since I've already set up position one, I can make the camera pan to that position every time my door opens. If you have an Android Wear that you've paired with NepaSmart, you can actually enable it to receive notifications as well. Next is push notifications. I'm going to tap on notify all users and then tap OK on this dialog box. Now every user connected to this camera will receive a push notification every time a detection occurs. This is important to note. If you don't want to receive a notification anymore, then turn off notify this device. This won't affect any other user but you. By contrast, if you don't want anybody to receive a notification, turn off notify all users. By tapping OK, nobody will receive a push notification from this particular camera. However, I definitely want the push notifications to be on, so I'm just going to tap on Notify All Users again and tap OK. For this next option, let's say you've left your garage door open accidentally. Right now, this option will send you a notification that your door is open every 10 minutes. You can change the time between these alerts. So let's say instead of every 10 minutes, you want every 15 minutes. Now the alert will remind you that your door is open every 15 minutes instead. Let's move on to recording options. So if you want to take a picture and or record a video from the camera every time the garage door opens and closes, you have a couple options here on where you can store them. For example, you can insert an SD card into the camera and then enable save picture to SD card or save video to SD card here. You can also store them on an FTP server that you can configure. For more details about this, you can refer to the user manual. Once you're done, you can tap save and exit. This will send you back to the main menu. So what we just did was activating our garage door detection, which can now send us alerts whenever it opens and closes. This procedure is really similar for different accessories like the perimeter beam. There are a few more settings to discuss, so I'm gonna tap on the gear button again. Next up is Amazon Drive Sync and Dropbox Sync. You can configure Amazon Drive or Dropbox to store your recorded images and videos. Both procedures are pretty similar, so I'm just going to show you Dropbox Sync for now. So the first thing we're going to do is enable Dropbox Sync. This dialog box will show up prompting you to connect your Dropbox account. So we're going to tap OK, and the app will be redirected to Dropbox. All you have to do is sign in with your Dropbox email and password, and then tap on Allow, and then tap on OK, which will return you back to the NepoSmart app. So now your Dropbox account is linked to your NepoSmart app. You can choose to store pictures and recorded videos to your Dropbox, but we recommend just choosing pictures to conserve space. For pictures, you'll see two images, one right when the detection occurs and one three seconds later. Now let's move on to the next device setting. I'll now talk about the SD card. You would want to use an SD card to do continuous recording or store pictures and videos every time a breach occurs. Here we've already inserted a 128 gig SD card into the NepoSmart camera. Make sure to use a high quality class 10 SD card. A poor quality SD card will affect the performance of the camera. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable SD card recording. This next option determines how long each recorded file will be. Since the SD card is continuously recording, each file will be 10 minutes long. We're just going to keep it at 10 and tap apply. Now the SD card is set to continuously record and store the camera's video. The next setting is FTP configuration, which is for advanced users, so we're not going to cover it in this video. Next, I'll briefly talk about motion settings. NepoSmart has the ability to use motion detection. So I'll tap on motion settings. 
So you can tap on a motion zone to bring you to this page. You can drag and resize the red square to specify what part of the image you'd like to detect motion. You can also change how sensitive the detection is. But we don't really recommend using motion detection as it might send you unreliable alerts. It's more reliable to use uh, door sensors or perimeter beams instead. But we provide the option for motion detection if you really want it. Now let's move on to the next setting. So audio settings allow you to detect whether there's noise in the room. Here you can adjust the microphone volume, which is how loud you can hear from the camera. And you can adjust the speaker volume, which is how loud the camera will emit your voice when you talk through the phone. You can also enable audio detection. So if the camera hears a noise in the room, then it'll alert you. You can also adjust how sensitive the camera is to noise. Once we're all set, we'll tap save and return back to the device settings. Next up is date and time. Here you can change the time zone or just match the time from your mobile device by just tapping on it. So now the web app settings allow you to access your Neposmart camera from a web browser instead of the app. But since there are more features on the app, we don't really expect you to use this. So we're just going to tap back. And the last device setting is the device info. Here you'll find some technical information about the camera, but here you can also turn off and on the LEDs of the camera. Anyway, that concludes it for the device settings. We'll now go back to the main screen and briefly talk about the icons at the bottom. So this device list will show you all the Neposmart devices connected to the app. The next icons show the recorded videos. In this menu, you can choose to view the recordings from a specific camera. Since we've only got one connected, I'll just tap on it. Here you'll see two types of videos, one that is scheduled and one that is detected. And you can choose to view any video that you want. You can also search for a specific date and time. Do this by tapping the magnifying glass on the top right. So here's a calendar for all the days on which we've recorded the videos. Also on the top, you can filter out whether to see schedule, detect, or see both types of videos. Anyway, once you've chosen the specific day as well as the specific type of video, then you can tap done. The video list will now filter everything out based on your search conditions. Now let's head back and talk about the next icon, the controllers. This section is very useful when you have many different cameras and you want to enable or disable a specific camera's controller. For example, if one of your cameras is hooked up to the garage opener and you don't want it to send you notifications anymore, then you can just go to this menu and disable it. It's basically like a fast access menu for controllers. And finally, the About section just gives you uh, general information and allows you to contact us from there. Anyway, that wraps up this full app tutorial. If you have any more questions, you can visit our website or contact us on the support page. Thanks for watching.